Hello, I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures. And tonight I'm out here with my 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And over there I have a 10 inch Dobsonian telescope because tonight I want to see if I can see the Horsehead Nebula. I see 434, also known as Barnard 33. It is in the constellation Orion the Hunter. And it is just south of the easternmost star of his belt on the tack. And it's part of the larger Orion molecular cloud complex. But it's a dark nebula and it's very hard to see. In fact, I would almost say it doesn't exist except that I've taken pictures of it <laughs> with a camera. Well, I've never seen it. I've tried to see it many times. But tonight, there's no moon. It is very clear. I'm out here in Dark Skies, Montana. Uh, Zasteria says it's a Bortle 3, but I'm not so sure. So i am got this sky quality meter. I think the highest number, the higher the number, the better the sky quality is 22. I tested it last night and it said 21. I don't think so, but uh, I'll keep testing. The reason I got this is because the sky quality is deteriorating because there's a town nearby and it's undergoing tremendous development. And in fact, soon this won't be a Bortle 3 anymore. But it's a Bortle 3 right now with sky quality 21. And there's no moon and it's clear and it's going to snow all next week. So this is my big opportunity to try to see the Horsehead Nebula. And these two telescopes, my 12-inch Mead and my 10-inch Dobsonian, are the biggest ones I have. I haven't figured out yet how to show you <laughs> that I've seen it. I don't really think it's possible, but uh, I will, I'll tell the truth and tell you if I see it. And I will sketch it. If I see it, I'll sketch it and I'll show you my sketch. How about that? Deal? Okay, so... Um, it's uh, gonna uh, be light for another hour or so, I think. So I'll come back when it's nice and dark and we'll try to look at the Horsehead Nebula. And by the way, the Horsehead Nebula was discovered by Scottish astronomer Wilhelmina Fleming in 1888. So she saw it, but she was looking at glass plates. <laughs> she wasn't looking through a telescope. Okay, I'll be back. I'm just waiting for it to get dark, but I just wanted to show y'all something. This is Venus and Jupiter. They're getting closer and closer until the day they kiss. It's really pretty, but you got to catch it within an hour of sunset because Venus will set. Let's see what Sue French has to say about the Horsehead Nebula. Okay, she's got, I see 405, 410, 417. She does not have 434. And for Orion, she has M42, M43, NGC 1977, NGC 1981. Orion is the triple star and two Struve double stars. Nothing about the Horsehead Nebula, so that shows you what Sue French thinks about it. This is looking west toward the little town that's undergoing development. And if there are low clouds, the town light pollution reflects off of them and makes this hideous light pollution glow in the sky. And that's why I don't believe that SQM reading of 21, but I guess it could be 21 if 22 is the highest. Because other than that glow, it is pretty dark here. Okay, over here I have my 10 inch Dobsonian and I'm going to try to see the Horsehead Nebula first with the 10 inch. I'm going to start with the low magnification and I'm going to try without the filter and then I'm going to try with the filter see if I can see it and then increase the magnification and then I'm going to go over to the 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain. But I'm going to turn that light off and get my eyes nice and dark adapted. So I'll be back in 30 minutes after I turn this light off and my eyes are nice and dark adapted. 
Then I'll try to see it, and the, the Dobsonian should be nice and cooled down, so everything should be ideal at that time. So I'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so there's Orion, and now it's time to find the Horsehead Nebula. Okay, my eyes are nice and dark adapted, but one thing that you probably noticed is that there's a lot of snow and snow can reflect the starlight and it can diminish the darkness. But I took the SQM reading and it was 21, so I don't think it affects it that much. And it's pretty dark and moonless night and clear skies and the seeing's good, the transparency's good, so everything should be good. So I'm going to start with 24 millimeters with no filter and see if I can see it. See if it's still in there. Okay. Mm. Mm. I'm not seeing much. Okay, I'm gonna take out the 24 millimeter and put in an 11 millimeter just to see if a higher magnification will help. 11 millimeters would make it 109 times magnification. Let me get it back in there. Okay, and what I'm looking for is below on the tack are two stars that I think are a double star and then another star and the nebula should be in between those. Um, uh, this didn't help. I I'm going to go back to the 24 millimeter and I'm going to put in the filter now. Now I have two filters. So let me explain the difference. So both of these filters are narrow band filters. One of them is an O3 filter and the other one is an H beta filter. Uh, this O3 filter lets in a narrow band of the spectrum of light uh, from 486 to 501 nanometers. And it's good for most nebulae. Uh, Orion, the uh, planetary nebulae, uh, veil nebula works great. This other filter is called an H beta filter and it's the narrowest of the narrow band filters. In fact, I think it only works on the Horsehead Nebula. And it only allows in an eight nanometer part of the spectrum. I think 486 nanometers. So I'm gonna put that on the 24 millimeter eyepiece and see if I can see it. Let me get it back in there. Okay. Oh, is it dark? Okay. I don't know if I'm imagining, but I think I see a faint hint of nebulosity between those stars that I was looking at. And I do mean faint. Now let me see if I can see the notch. I mean, the nebula is so faint. Mm, I'm not really seeing it. It's pretty faint. So I think it's time to go to the 12 inch telescope and see if I can see it in that. But before I go over there, since I went to all the trouble to get all this stuff out, I'm going to put in my O3 filter and look at the Great Orion Nebula. I gotta go down to his sword. Okay. <laughs> it looks so good. 
Wow. Okay, normally I'd look at it longer, but let's go over to the 12 inch telescope and try to find the horse head nebula. Whoa. I couldn't resist. Just to warm up, I put the great Orion Nebula in here in this 12 inch telescope and even without the filter, whoa. <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, the trapezium is so clear and it just, it, this looks great. It looks blue to me. I would love to see red, but I don't think it's possible, but I'm gonna put the filter on. Uh, if you'll just uh, indulge me for a minute and look at Orion, and then I'll try to see if I can see the horse head in this big whopping 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain. I have a 24 millimeter eyepiece. I think the focal length of this telescope is 3048. Wow. If you haven't tried to put an O3 filter on to look at Orion Nebula, do because it looks so good it barely fits in this big honking telescope but it looks so good it has a distinct blue to me I know some people say green but it looks blue to me it looks great okay now it's time to try to see the horsehead nebula okay I have the horsehead nebula and my 12 inch telescope with a 24 millimeter eyepiece and I'm not seeing anything okay I'm just gonna go straight to the filter and I'm going to turn this red light off to get it, it as dark as possible the best chance possible to see it okay now that I've finished admiring Orion with the O3 filter, which looked very cool. Now I'm going to put in an H beta filter, which some people even call the horse head filter because it works well on the horse head nebula. And I also, I switched out the 24 millimeter for the 32 millimeter. I don't know why I had the 32 millimeter on my Dobsonian. This is a nicer eyepiece. Um, has a bigger field of view, which is helpful. So this is 32 millimeter Teleview Plossel with an H beta filter. So I'm gonna look at it and see if that red light bothers me. I, I can just barely make out the faint nebulosity and just the barest hint of a notch in the in it. So, yes, I can see the horsehead nebula, not very well, but you can see it with a big telescope and an H beta filter is essential. I'm gonna put the blanket over my head and see if it helps any. Okay, that helped. Every little thing helps when it comes to the Horsehead Nebula. Big telescope with big aperture, H beta filter, dark skies, and block out any extraneous lights and let your eyes get dark adapted. 30 minutes with no lights, that's also essential. So, yes, it does exist. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying, wow, it doesn't, uh, it wouldn't get on a, a top 10 list for telescopic uh, objects, but um, some people, you know, they just like a challenge and it's definitely a challenge. So it does exist. It's not a wow moment. It's a challenge. So I can tick it off just like Pluto. Pluto and Horsehead Nebula are nothing to write home about, but uh, I saw it. So. Now, I guess I do have to draw a sketch. I'll do my best, but if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that my sketches are not very good, but I will sketch it, and I'll show that to you at the end. My conclusion is, if it's that hard to see, don't waste your time on it. 
take your precious time if you go out to a dark sky site look at something more exciting like the great orion nebula or the clown face nebula in gemini or if it's summertime the swan nebula the trifid nebula the there are lots of things that are way more exciting hello again it's another day so i thought i'd try again for the horsehead nebula I got out my 12 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain and I let my eyes get completely dark adapted, 45 minutes, no lights. And I pointed my telescope this time first to NGC 2024, the Flame Nebula, which is nearby. It's a little bit easier to see than the horse head. And I can see some faint wispiness in it. So I didn't use a filter. I just pointed the telescope at the horse head and I looked at the spot where it's supposed to be. I used averted vision. I, I stared at it for a very long time. And this time I put this blanket over my head to block out all stray light because I don't know if you can see it, but the people across the road have put that spotlight back up, unfortunately. And so I used this blanket to block out all lights. And I just barely could make out the dark notch. So yes, you can see it in a very dark place, a Bortle 3 or better, and with a big, huge whopping aperture telescope. I don't know if, you, I don't think you could see it with the eight inch, unless you were in a very dark place under ideal conditions and had an H beta filter um, or maybe without the filter you could see it in the board of one but really you need a big huge telescope at least 10 inches if not bigger and same conclusion yes you can see it it's very difficult it's very faint but it's like Pluto it's not much to write home about it's more like something to put on your life list so if that's important to you then Try for it with a big whopping telescope, an H beta filter, and a dark sky sight with ideal conditions, good transparency, good seeing, and no clouds. I think there's a reason why William and Caroline Herschel never discovered the Horsehead Nebula with their big whopping telescope because that's how faint it is. Even as diligent as they were, they couldn't see it. Okay, I've finished my sketch. I used a number two pencil, a blending stump, and an eraser. And it really wasn't that dark, but if I made it any lighter, you wouldn't be able to see it. So there's my sketch of the Horsehead Nebula IC434. Okay. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Su